Welcome back guys. Today I am so excited about this dish that I'm doing. I'm so ready to enjoy it. Later I'll be doing a cast iron mac and cheese with oxtails. For the oxtails I have maybe about two to three pounds of um, oxtails that I've already thoroughly washed and cleaned. I washed it with vinegar. You could use vinegar or any citrus, lemon or lime juice to get all the gooeyness off of it, get it nice and clean. I also have, over here I have dried thyme, salt and pepper. This is a powder garlic and onion blend. I have fresh onions, fresh garlic cloves. I have cloves, ginger, celery, peppers, scallions from my kitchen window garden, tomato paste, a bay leaf, and right here it is my green seasoning if you wanna make my all-purpose green seasoning you can scroll down for the tutorial for that one because we're gonna be using that a lot so guys this is totally optional but I like to add some Worcestershire sauce to the oxtails to marinate while I'm adding all the other seasonings I don't know if I said the word right because I always mess it up but here it is add a little bit of this and it's totally optional you are also gonna need a coloring agent I would be we say browning sugar or burning sugar it's actually caramelizing the sugar to make a browning because that's how i was taught growing up and i actually really like the flavor of just burning the sugar and making a caramel however you don't have to feel pressure to do that feel free to use any bottled browning to your oxtails or you can use if you're familiar with the gravy master you can use that too but i would strongly suggest browning sugar it could be white sugar also or using like a browning Once you've seasoned your oxtails, please just wrap it up, put it in the fridge for maybe about at least, I'll say at least an hour. I like to do this the night before. If you can get this seasoned the night before um, for the next day, then it gets even tastier because the seasonings get to soak in and it gets to marinate a lot better. All right, let the fun begin, guys. We're gonna, I have a cast iron here and I'm just gonna add some oil just about a teaspoon so we can go ahead and caramelize the sugar on that now I'm gonna add my sugar so that it will start to caramelize you want to stay close by and keep a close eye on this all right guys this is about a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar and we're just gonna let it get hot and it'll start melting and stay close by so you can give it a nice stir so that it doesn't burn keep double checking on it it's starting to melt a bit here I really like to do it the old-fashioned way where you caramelize the sugar I really like the taste that it gives but like I said earlier there's no shame in the game get that brown in and you can do the same process with the brown in okay you just want to keep stirring it so it would evenly cook and not get dark and burn in different spots so just keep giving it some really nice stirs it's caramelizing really nicely you also want to keep your oxtail close by because there's a thin line between getting it perfectly caramelized and burning it you do not want to burn the sugar okay look at that it's looking really really good all right, it looks pretty good to me now. Once the sugar gets really runny and you can no longer see any grains and it's getting a nice caramel dark color, get ready to add your oxtails. Give it some nice stirs so you can get the browning, the caramel. everywhere all right 
And once I've mixed that in, I like to just cover it down so that it can cook into its own juices and the meat can get nicely caramelized and I'm anticipating to slow cook this for about an hour and a half because I got oxtails that was sliced really thinly. That way I don't have to go through that whole long process of waiting for it to cook. So these are sliced really thin. So I would slow cook these for about an hour to an hour and a half. Continue to check it and stir it. If you need to add liquids, feel free to add um, a chicken stock. I'm just going to add water because I have my my chicken stock bouillon on my base. I have my chicken base and beef base that I'm gonna add. So I'll just be adding hot water as I go to help it to um, not dry out. And you wanna keep the liquid going. Yeah, I'm gonna just cover this down and let it cook. All right guys, time to check back in on our oxtails. They're looking really really good like I said they're thin and so they're already probably halfway through with the cooking it has actually created its own juices and liquids and it's looking really really good now I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken base beef base and the remainder of the chopped onions peppers and stuff that I have left here we have it we have our Maggie chicken base, our beef base, and our veggies. I'm also going to drop a bay leaf into this. You want to give it a gentle stir and then taste it. You taste it to make sure that it has enough seasonings, enough salt, enough garlic, and then if you think that it needs more, then you can add a little bit. Feel free to be creative with your seasonings that you have in your pantry at home, all right? This is looking really good so far. So we're gonna cover it and let it slow cook for about another 20 minutes. Later on, I'm gonna add my tomato paste to bring it in. Let's see how that goes. The oxtails have been cooking for almost an hour now. They're looking pretty good. They definitely need to cook down some more. In the meantime, I'm gonna add my tomato paste and just sit it on on top here if you have some fresh thyme go ahead and toss some fresh thyme into it i would normally add coconut milk at this point also but i'm out of it so if you have some just go ahead and toss it in Fire.